Good morning. Welcome to our Palm Sunday worship at St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Platteville, Wisconsin. Uh, as I just said, today is Palm Sunday, and this is uh, perhaps the most unusual Palm Sunday, the most unusual Holy Week uh, that we have celebrated in a few years and probably, hopefully, uh, for a number of years to come. Uh, we're separated physically from one another, uh, and that is something that's especially hard during Holy Week because we're used to gathering. And in fact, many people gather during Holy Week physically that, that maybe uh, aren't always in church. And, and this is an opportunity when it's sort of an all hands on deck approach. And, and that's disappointing that we can't gather physically. But this too shall pass. And when it does, we will gather. And hopefully, Lord willing, we'll gather in full force uh, and have uh, an opportunity to do some of the things that we're not able to do this week. But I've chosen to have a full slate of uh, Holy Week services this week online. We will have today's worship, obviously. We will have Monday, Thursday at 7 p.m. Central Time, Good Friday, 7 p.m. Central Time, uh, and Easter Sunday, 9.15 uh, a.m. Central Time, a week from today. Um, the only difference will be that if you would like to receive the Lord's Supper uh, and are a member of our congregation, uh, you'll have to come during my office hours or make an appointment to do that. Uh, we won't be able to do that on Monday, Thursday, or this morning. Also, I'll just give a couple of announcements before we begin our worship. Uh, with regard to music, we have Ruth Camps here today playing for us, so we will have some musical accompaniment, and we thank her for that. Uh, also, I tested, uh, listened to the CD and also the Facebook recording or Facebook stream from our Wednesday service and determined that the best way for you to, to follow along with the hymns isn't just for the music to be playing, but for me to have my microphone on. Um, my voice doesn't completely overpower the music. Uh, if it's off, you can't actually hear any words, and I think there's some benefit to you hearing the words as well. So um, I'll leave my mic on during the hymns, uh, and I think the balance should be okay. Um, that's all I was going to say for today. Um, the ser this service is a simple service. Um, uh, we're following uh, the common service from uh, Christian worship. Um, perhaps if we were gathered in a, a normal Palm Sunday worship, we'd have a special liturgy. But today I thought, let's just focus on the words about Jesus' triumphant entry. Um, we do have a reminder that today is Palm Sunday uh, with palms in our sanctuary. Let us begin our worship then at this time. Our opening hymn is hymn 131. It's all glory, laud, and honor. It's on page 16 in the packet uh, or bulletin that I mailed out to you or emailed to you, or it's in your Christian worship hymnal. Hymn 131. Oh 
begin our worship of the triune God in the name of the triune God, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this, I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord, have mercy. to us, and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. Glory be to God on Son to take upon himself our human nature. By his gracious coming, deliver us from the corruption of our sin and transform us into the likeness of his glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our first lesson. Our first lesson for this Palm Sunday, it's a, a traditional set of lessons that we use virtually every Palm Sunday. The gospel does vary, but the first lesson is typically Zechariah 9, 9 and 10. Hundreds of years before our Savior actually entered Jerusalem, the prophet Zechariah, by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, saw the coming of Messiah and recorded on the pages of his prophecy for us today to see that this plan that our Lord had to bring our Savior to Jerusalem for us, to suffer for us, to die for us, and then to rise again for us, this was a plan that God has had from the beginning. 
Listen to the prophet Zechariah speak of our Savior. Rejoice greatly, daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and brings salvation. He is humble and is riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The battle bow will be taken away and he will proclaim peace to the nations. His kingdom will extend from sea to sea, from the river to the ends of the earth. This is the word of our Lord. We join together in singing Psalm 24. Psalm 24 is found on page 17 in the worship folder that you should have uh, received. Uh, It's also in the front of Christian worship, Psalm 24. Sunday is from Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. And in this reading, we hear a description of how our Savior, though he is the king of the universe, though he is over all, though he is eternally divine and all-powerful, nevertheless took on human weakness, took on human flesh for us. And in so doing, he humbled himself. And he didn't consider his divinity something that he would grasp onto and use for his own advantage, but rather he, he took on our weakness so that he could die a human death. Listen to the words of the Apostle Paul to the Philippians. Indeed, let this attitude be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Though he was by nature God, he did not consider equality with God as a prize to be displayed, but he emptied himself by taking the nature of a servant. When he was born in human likeness and his appearance was like that of any other man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. 
Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Please stand for the Gospel. Our Holy Gospel is recorded in Matthew chapter 21. Glory be to you. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, telling them, Go to the village ahead of you. Immediately you will find a donkey tied there along with her colt. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you are to say, The Lord needs them, and he will send them at once. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king comes to you, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did just as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the colt, laid their outer clothing on them, and he sat on it. A very large crowd spread their outer clothing on the road. Others were cutting branches from the trees and spreading them out on the road. The crowds who went in front of him and those who followed kept shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up, asking, Who is this? And the crowds were saying, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you. Join me in confessing our faith according to the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for our hymn of the day. Our hymn of the day is 133 in Christian worship. Ride on, ride on in majesty. It's found on page 18 in your worship packet. Ride on, ride on in majesty. Thank you. 
brothers and sisters in Jesus, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Our English language doesn't quite catch it. To us, the name Jesus and the Hebrew word Hosanna, they sound completely unrelated, don't they? But in their original language, Hebrew, they make beautiful harmony. Let's, let me explain. When the angel Gabriel first appeared to Mary to tell her that she would be the mother of the very Son of God, he also gave her God's command in this way. You are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. There was a connection between his name and what he would do. Yeshua, you will call him Yeshua, or Joshua as we would say, literally means the Lord saves. Years later, as Jesus rode into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, that cry Hosanna filled the air, but it sounded like this, Hoshiana, it was from the same verb, Yasha, as Jesus' name. Hoshiana literally means save us now. How fitting was this shout, this cry as our, our Savior rode into Jerusalem. Hoshiana, just one word in Hebrew that was related to Jesus' name, but in English, three words of truth that summarize everything he came into this world to do. Save us now. As God in his grace has brought us again to the beginning of another Holy Week, may this cry be found on our lips too. Hosanna. There is no word more appropriate for these challenging times. Now we can pretty much pinpoint the very day. It was a Sunday in early spring, we think 33 AD, that Jesus set out with his disciples from Bethany, a little village about three miles from the temple, just on the ridge of the Mount of Olives east of Jerusalem. How strange that he was going to a city named Yerushalayim, Jerusalem, which means house of peace. Strange because by the end of this Passover week, the house of peace would be shaking with violence and hatred. The crowds nearly rioting and, and not stopping until this prophet from Nazareth in Galilee was tortured, captured, and finally executed. That's what lay at the end of the Palm Sunday road. So no matter how lovely and joyful that procession was that afternoon, with color, colorful garments and pungent palms, paving the way, at the end of it lay darkness and death. And Jesus knew it. But his disciples were still in the dark, as was the excited crowd. All of them catching sight of Herod's temple with its solid gold-plated facade were much too caught up in the excitement of the moment. Their heads were filled with, with happy, patriotic thoughts of celebrating Passover in the holy city of God. It was a special time to celebrate their heritage. Jews around the world today still close their modern Passover celebrations with that longing prayer next year in Jerusalem. And the words they were singing, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. It's straight out of Psalm 118, a psalm that was a special use psalm. They used it at Passover a psalm that reflected on the very first Passover and that miraculous deliverance from Egypt that God provided. What could be more appropriate? What could have been more traditional or more inspiring? Nothing. But that's exactly where we sense a bit of emptiness in the entire festival scene. See, by the end of the week, the crowd's mood had changed. By the end of the week, the disciples will have abandoned Jesus to face his enemies and to die alone. The sad reality is that most in the crowd probably cried Hosanna with their voices, but not with the voice of faith. And we ask, is it any different today? There's so much talk about faith in this country. Just about everyone claims to have faith, but what is faith? What does it mean to be religious? How do you define spiritual? 
Sad to say, the prevailing attitude today is that I get to define what my faith is. I get to decide my personal beliefs or how I will express them in worship or in the way I live my life. And that type of thinking can affect even God's people. Look right here in the gospel before us this morning. In one sense, we'd say the cheering crowd had faith, didn't they? But it became apparent that for many people, faith was really just custom. It was tradition. It was ritual. It was observance. And there were curiosity seekers in the crowd, too. Who is this, they asked, probably just getting swept up in the parade. For many, faith was crying at the king, but not crying to the king. And that's a real problem. A real problem here and in our world today, that people don't see that faith needs an object. It's not just a feeling. It's not just a a positive vibe. You don't just believe. You don't just have faith. You need to have faith in something or someone that is real and genuine and reliable. And by God's grace, the Spirit has led you and me to put our faith in the one who is true, Jesus Christ. We believe in Jesus and who he is and what he did. And we need to always remember that so that our faith doesn't become the faith of the Palm Sunday crowd. Holy Week is an excellent time to remind ourselves of this. With all of our special worship services and liturgies, we shouldn't just listen to or participate in our Good Friday service just because we really like, perhaps, the service of darkness or tenebrae. No, the goal of Good Friday is to stand at the foot of the cross in fearful awe mixed with a a wonder and a joy that God chose to do this for us. We shouldn't just do Easter worship, online or otherwise, simply because we think we should at least somehow go to church on Easter. The goal isn't the doing. The goal isn't the checking off the box. No, the goal is understanding the power of Christ's resurrection. We must not join with the crowd shouting at the king, lest what God said to Isaiah about his people of old becomes true of us. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. No, don't simply cry Hosanna at the king. Cry Hosanna, save me to the king in faith. And there's a difference. To cry Hosanna to the king means to confess that he is your only hope of salvation, and that without him you are eternally lost. To cry Hosanna to the king means to confess our sins and to recognize the punishment they deserve, to abandon all hope of saving ourselves or finding some assurance of heaven in our good behavior. It means to come to him spiritually naked and poor and broken and to look for him for clothing, for true wealth and healing. To cry Hosanna to the king in true faith means to come to him and plead, save me now because there's no other way. And those who by God's grace cry to the king in true faith, we have his promise and he hears them. I call out to the Lord and he answers me from his holy mountain. Psalm 3 verse 4 tells us. Now in David's day, the the holy mountain was where the Ark of the Covenant was kept, on the future site of the, the temple. But now God's holy mountain is Calvary. How loudly and clearly he answers us there when we cry to him, Hosanna, save us, because there on the cross hangs the answer for the problem of our sin. It's the only answer there is. There hangs Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews, Crowned with thorns then, he's now crowned with glory and honor. And he rode into Jerusalem to go to that hill to die for you. And so we cry to him. We cry with our pains, our hurts, our confusion, our problems, our fears, our doubts about his love for us. And his answer comes back time and time again. I am your king, but more importantly, I am your savior. You see, he is the proof of God's forgiveness and love for mankind. He's the proof that the Lord 
can help you. He's the proof that God will help you because he has helped you at the cross. And he will comfort you. He will encourage you. He will strengthen you. And he will equip you for every good work. Praise be to the Lord. For he has heard my cry for mercy. That's what Psalm 28 verse 6 says. Hosanna. It's a cry to the king, but it's also a motto for the kingdom. Matthew records that the crowds sang, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. People and nations choose mottos that reflect who they are and what they stand for. Think of America's motto, e pluribus unum, out of many, one. It reflects the truth that America welcomes all as the great melting pot. Hosanna. What a fitting motto for the kingdom of Christ. Save us now. You see, that's what Christ's kingdom is all about. It's about salvation. It's about the eternal release from the bondage of sin. It's about eternal life and indescribable bliss and joy. This is the goal of our faith in Christ. The eternal salvation of our souls. This is the reason he is king and the reason he has brought us into his kingdom. But who understood that on Palm Sunday or during the rest of Holy Week? The crowd didn't, by and large. They thought Jesus had come in riding on a donkey to set up a a political dynasty, that Israel would be great again, as it had been under King David, that Jesus would drive the Romans out, that he would heal their diseases, maybe multiply loaves of bread every day, to bring worldly peace and prosperity. And we know many in the crowd were expecting that because St. Mark's gospel records, the crowd also shouted, blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. They were focused on an earthly kingdom. But Jesus would say to Pilate later in the week, my kingdom is from another place. No, his kingdom is about eternal salvation. It isn't about international salvation peace treaties, or anything earthly. His kingdom wasn't about winning against Rome, but about winning over Romans and Greeks and Jews and Gentiles from all over the world and to have them cry Hosanna to the king in true faith. And we as members of the kingdom, we want to always continue to focus on that truth. Christ has called each of us to preach the good news of the kingdom that salvation is free and already won by Jesus for the world. And everyone who believes will inherit an eternal kingdom in heaven. That is the beautiful, powerful motto we proclaim. A motto that gives true hope, true joy, true peace to a world that so desperately needs these things right now and always. So while others, and yes, even some Christian churches, look for some sort of golden age Christian millennium here on earth, some sort of a a political Christianity. Brothers and sisters, especially this Holy Week, let's focus on Jesus and his kingdom. Let's shout Hosanna, the motto of the true kingdom. Proclaim with joy what John heard in heaven, heard all of heaven say in Revelation. Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And so we cry out, Hoshiana, save us now. Because that's what our King Jesus, Yeshua, rode into Jerusalem to do. It's what the cross assures us he did. And that's what the empty tomb guarantees he will come back to do. That's what our King is all about. That's what his kingdom is is all about. God bless your worship this holy week as we worship our King. In his name we pray. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding will keep your hearts and minds through faith in Jesus your Lord. Amen. At this time, I ask the congregation to turn to page 14 in your worship folder. Uh, This is a prayer for the nation. It's also in the prayer section of the front of Christian worship if you're looking for it with the, the other prayers of the church. 
I thought this would be a very appropriate uh, prayer to pray at this time of national challenge. We pray this responsive prayer. Excuse me, let's sing the create in me first. on page 14 in your worship folder. Almighty God, we acknowledge with thanks that all we have and enjoy is a gift from your gracious hand. We come before you today in heartfelt appreciation for our nation and its people. We thank you for enabling us to worship you in freedom and to serve you without fear. You have enriched us with the bounties of farm and factory, the beauty of forest and mountain, and the marvels of medicine and science. For all these blessings, we praise and glorify you. Look with favor upon our nation and preserve our cherished liberties. Enable our leaders to govern with wisdom, honesty, courage, and justice. Protect those who serve in the armed forces and those who maintain peace and safety in our communities. Give us willingness to obey our nation's laws and to work for the common good. Keep our financial institutions secure and our economy strong. Bless our fields that they may produce abundant harvests. Guard us from the calamities of nature and accident and spare our land from the ravages of disease and epidemic. Teach us not to worry, but to cast all our cares on you. Strengthen the homes of our nation. By your spirit, lead husbands and wives to love each other, parents to nurture their children, young adults to assume responsibility, and children to show respect. Hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. To you, O Lord, we bring our thanks and our requests. Hear our prayers for Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with hymn 217 in Christian worship, The Head That Once Was Crowned. It's also on page 19 in your worship folder.
time for our closing prayer blessing, and we will close with hymn 130. We pray. Blessed Lord, you have given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart, that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Receive with believing hearts the blessing of your triune God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. 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 You may be seated. We close with him 130. Hosanna, loud Hosanna on page 20 in your worship folder. Again, to all of you who have been listening and uh, the three of you who are here today, thank you for gathering. We especially thank Ruth uh, for accompanying us uh, this morning. Uh, we appreciate that very much. I think it does add to our worship. Uh, again, just a brief reminder, worship this week, 7 p.m. Thursday evening, 7 p.m. Friday evening, 9.15 Easter Sunday morning. And a number of people have suggested to me that when we are on the other side of this um, set of limitations, that our, our, we should have a worship return that sort of is intended to uh, replace what we would have done on Easter. Not that we'll have Easter all over again, but we'll still be in the Easter season, Lord willing, uh, and that we can maybe have some sort of a, a breakfast and a, and a celebration of our return to the sanctuary. So I think we can all look forward to that with anticipation. So join us this week uh, for our uh, additional worship services. Um, I really don't have any other announcements to make at this time. God bless you. God keep you. Stay safe. Um, be healthy and trust in Jesus. Thank you. <laughs>